Might take a while, we might be here all night. Hello, Dr. Joe here. So in front of me here, I have got three magnesium products that I'm gonna be talking about in this very video. Now, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, I did a video where I talked about individuals who mandatorily should be using magnesium supplementation. And I mentioned group seven, there were eight groups. Do you remember those who belong to group seven? You probably don't, so we're going to remind ourselves about them shortly. But before we do, a quick plug. This is my book on managing high blood pressure with lifestyle approach. This is the second edition of this very book. Links to get a book right below this very video. It's the best book out there on the subject. Yes, so links right below this very video. How about we remind ourselves who belong to group? Seven. Who else? Group number seven. These are individuals who suffer from any condition that may cause loose bowel motions. And these will include people who suffer from irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, they will need to supplement. The reason behind this, by the way, is the fact that when you have loose bowel motions, you are going to lose some magnesium in the process and uh, you might need to uh, uh, replace that. So irritable bowel syndrome individuals, they need to supplement wells. Uh, people who suffer from Crohn's disease and colitis, they also uh, will need to supplement with magnesium. And subgroup number three will be individuals who suffer from celiac disease. This is a condition where you have gluten sensitivity and uh, it does lead to abdominal pains and diarrhea. You are going to lose magnesium in the process, and that means you may need to uh, supplement as well. So, as you can tell there, the people who belong to that group 7 are likely to have absorption issues. That is to say, when they take their magnesium supplement by mouth, they are unlikely to absorb all of the magnesium in the supplement. Now, for obvious reasons. But they're not the only ones. Some of us, too, when we take a magnesium supplement, we probably don't absorb a lot of it. So some of us are being shortchanged. Now, people who have had gastric bypass, by the way, they also belong to this very group. So what I have here, these are magnesium skin preparations. So they are an alternative means of administering your magnesium. The question though is that, of course, our skin is a tough organ in itself. So if you apply magnesium on the skin, will it get absorbed? Um, let's see whether there's any evidence to suggest that absorption through the skin is possible. Okay, so we're going to look at two studies that provide some sort of evidence to show that using magnesium, applying it on the skin, uh, does work. And that is to say it does get absorbed uh, into the body. So, uh, the first study here was a randomized control trial published in PLOS ONE journal with the title, Effect of Transdermal Magnesium Cream on Serum and Urinary Magnesium Levels in Humans, a pilot study. So, transdermal simply means using it through the skin. So, what they did in this very study was they took 25 participants and made them to apply 56 milligrams of uh, magnesium cream per day or to apply placebo, okay? Just uh, uh, ordinary cream that's got nothing in it. That's the placebo version. And uh, the study lasted for two weeks. What they found in this very study was in the magnesium group, there was an 8.5% increase in serum magnesium. Serum magnesium is blood magnesium, okay? So, 8.5% increase in blood magnesium and a 9% increase in magnesium excreted in the urine. So the magnesium was getting absorbed and also getting excreted. So that is proof that it did get absorbed. That's uh, what they're trying to prove in this very study. And in the placebo group, there was a 2.6% increase in serum magnesium, which is the blood magnesium. Uh, but no increase in urinary excretion of magnesium. So, uh, proof here that the magnesium does get absorbed uh, when applied through the skin. So, that's the first study. The second one is this one here that was uh, published in Epsom Salt Council website. 
Uh, it's not a peer-reviewed uh, study. It wasn't published in a journal, but it's on their website. And it's got the title, Report on Absorption of Magnesium Sulfate, which is Epsom salt, uh, across the skin. And uh, in this very study, what they did was they made the uh, study participants to soak themselves for two hours in Epsom salt, which is magnesium sulfate. And they did that for seven consecutive days. And here is the result. They found a 40% increase in blood magnesium after the seven consecutive days of soaking in the Epsom salt for two hours each day. That's quite a long soak, I have to say. Um, so 40% increase. So that also shows that the magnesium does get absorbed. So absorption through the skin is possible, as you can tell from those two research papers that I shared with you. There are others, by the way, I want to keep the video short. Hence, I just uh, mentioned those very two. Now, here's the thing. If you're going to take your magnesium through the skin, well, there's a condition that I think that needs to be met, okay? This condition needs to be met, and it's very, very important. And I will encourage you to pay attention to what I'm going to say next. So here is what you must do, okay? This is really, really important. And uh, it is the fact that, first of all, what you need to recognize is that magnesium is not lipophilic. That is to say, it doesn't get dissolved in fat easily. And uh, that means diffusion through the skin is not possible because for it to get absorbed through diffusion through the skin, it needs to mix with the fat that is underneath the skin. Uh, but magnesium doesn't do that. And uh, which means that the only way it's going to get transported across the skin when you apply it is uh, it's going to go through sweat glands or the hair follicles, okay, or both. So absorption is only possible in areas where you have sweat glands and hair follicles because it needs active transport across the skin. And uh, it's going to do that. Uh, that transportation is going to take place in the areas where you have sweat glands and hair follicles. So that's what you must do for you to increase the potential of absorption. Okay, I just want to make two points before we round up the video. And this is apart from the fact that you should apply your skin preparations in areas where you got sweat glands and hair follicles. So uh, point number one is that on the internet, you're going to read or hear about the fact that skin preparations are superior in terms of absorption potential than the oral preparation, so the tablets and the capsules. I've dug deep into this and I can confirm that that's not true, okay? That's not true. Um, what, what I want you to see skin preparations as is that they are an alternative to the tablets or the capsules, but in terms of absorption potential, they are not superior, okay? That's point number one. Point number two is that, uh, you know, I have a little hump with the dosage standardization in the skin preparations. Now, I've got a cream here. I've got a spray here, and this is another cream. Now, uh, there are other types. You've got oils, you've got lotions, uh, you've got the salt, which is the Epsom salt, and that is magnesium sulfate, uh, which you dissolve in water and then you soak yourself in it. Now, the problem with all of them is there is no dosage standardization. So for instance, this one here, this cream here, when I look at the directions of use, it just says massage gently into skin until fully absorbed. Now, it doesn't tell me how much to, ma to massage, okay? It doesn't say anything along those lines. Uh, is it a quarter of a teaspoon, half a teaspoon, a teaspoon, tablespoonful? It doesn't say. So that is uh, this one. Uh, next is this one here. Uh, let's look at the directions of use. Where is it? So this one says dosage guidelines. It says adults uh, apply one teaspoon of cream as needed up to four times a day. So one teaspoon, one time a day. How much am I getting? It doesn't say. Twice a day, how much am I getting? It doesn't say. Uh, three times a day, how much magnesium am I getting? It doesn't say. Uh, four times a day, how much magnesium am I getting? It really doesn't say. So that's that one. What about the spray? This one is even worse. All it says is uh, shake well before use, uh, take the cap off, 
and uh, spray and massage gently. That's it. So, how many squares should I spray on my skin? Two squares, one square, three squares, four squares? It doesn't say. So, and uh, how much magnesium is in each square? It also doesn't say. So, that's the problem I've got with them, okay? Uh, I don't know how much magnesium I am getting when I use any of these products. So, uh, it's all a guesswork as far as the user is concerned. So, anyway, I also wanted to make that point. So, this one here, this one is being promoted as a sleep butter. And that's because they have added lavender uh, chamomile essential oils to it. So, that's okay. Now, because of that, it smells really great, okay? It smells nice. So, uh, how about uh, I take a little dollop here and massage it on my skin okay let's see uh how this goes now i am massaging it as you can see there it's taking a while for uh this to uh, get absorbed by the skin uh it might take a while we might be here all night okay looking at this uh, i know you've got things to do so we're gonna uh, leave it here what i want you to do is tell me if you have been using magnesium skin preparations uh, up until now, uh, let me know in the comment section, please. And uh, But like I said, the, the point I want to make is that I want you to see these products as alternative forms of administration. Uh, but in terms of superiority, they are not superior. Um, yeah, if you got some value from this very video, please give the video a thumbs up. Please uh, like the video and also please share this video with your friends, family and colleagues. Any questions, comments, leave them down below. I think that's it for this video. Until next time, well, this is Dr. Joe signing out.